In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Commodore 64 emulation up and running on the Nintendo Wii U using RetroArch. The Commodore 64 is another one of those retro computers that I just really never had an opportunity to get into back in the day, but have discovered over the last few years and have really been enjoying learning more about its history and game library. When Commodore 64 games began releasing on the Wii Virtual Console, that's when I got my first taste of the microcomputer in action, and it's honestly a lot more fun than I would have given it credit for, and I can see why so many people hold so much nostalgia for the system. Unfortunately, Commodore 64 didn't make the cut for Wii U, but thanks to emulation and programs like RetroArch, we can overcome this by adding our Commodore 64 games to the system ourselves. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today, so let's get started. To get started with Commodore 64 emulation, we need Commodore 64 games, and you can get these from the Wii Virtual Console if you happen to buy any on that service, or if you have a Commodore 64 Mini, you could dump them from that as well. And of course, you could also resort to the shady parts of the net if you so desire. Regardless of how you get your games, there is going to be a little bit of setup involved depending on if you have multi-track games. So going into my Commodore 64 games folder, I have a number of different format of Commodore 64 games. So we've got tape, disc, and cartridge. But at the top, I also have three folders that have multi-file games. So for example, California Games is on two separate floppy disks with four sides total. So to get this game up and running within RetroArch, we need to make a playlist file that will let us select each individual disk as we need them. And the process for this is relatively simple. If you're on Windows, all you need to do is right click, new, text document. If you're on Linux or Mac, just make a text document how you normally would. And we could just name it California Games for my example here. But now we're going to open it. And we're going to copy in the name of every single item of the folder. And once we have all of the disks into the text document, we're just going to save it. And we're going to close it down. And now we need to rename it into an M3U file. So on Windows, make sure that you have file name extensions checked right here under the View tab. That way you can see that it is a .txt document, because if it doesn't show the .txt extension and you try to add .m3u to the end, it's going to say californiagames.m3u.txt, and it's not going to work. So make sure you can see the real extension, and just change it from txt to m3u. Yes, we want to change it, we're really sure. And there we go, that is a playlist file, so that way when you load up RetroArch and you want to play California games, you're going to load up the m3u file. But now I'm going to do the same for my other two multi-track games here. And there we go. All of my multi-sided games now have an M3U file, so we can load them right up in Commodore 64 emulation through RetroArch. So once you have your games prepared and are ready to go, we just need to place them on our Wii U SD card. So on my Wii U SD card, I made a folder named RetroArch ROMs where I'm placing all of my games in this tutorial series. So I'm just going to add Commodore 64 to it. And once you have your games placed, you can close out of your Wii U SD card, take it out of your computer, put it back into your Wii U, and get the Wii U turned on. Now, just as a quick reminder, this guide is a continuation of my original Wii U RetroArch install video, so please refer back to that video for any initial install setup help and how to install this forwarder channel you see here. But now that's out of the way, let's go ahead and boot into RetroArch using either the Homebrew Launcher or this forwarder channel. After RetroArch is loaded, we can begin loading up our Commodore 64 games, and to do this, we're going to load up a Commodore 64 core, so go down to Load Core. Press right on your D-pad to go down to Commodore, and we are going to load up the Commodore C64 Vice X64 Fast Core. So press A on this one. Now, Fast isn't the best option for a number of devices, but on the Wii U, the accurate core doesn't seem to work as well, so this is what we're going to use. Like, it seems to work well enough 
I'm, I have very limited Commodore 64 experience. I'm not sure what accuracy issues you might run into here, but at least the games run in full speed. So there's that. But once the core has loaded, you can then load up your Commodore 64 games. And to do this, you go to load content and navigate to your SD card and then find the folder that you put your games in. So for me, it was in SD card, RetroArch ROMs, Commodore 64 games. And then you could just select a game, choose the core, and it'll begin to run. This option is really long-winded though, and I don't care for it, so instead, I like to make a games playlist, and to do this, you go back out to the main menu, go over to the left, and go down to import content. And from here, you do a manual scan, content directory, choose your SD card where you have your games. Keep scrolling past it, not sure what that's about. But then hit scan this directory once you have it selected. Now system name, this is Commodore 64. And for default core, we are going to choose Commodore 64 Vice Fast. Now, if you have multi-sided games, as I outlined in the game setup folder, make sure you turn scan recursively off, because if you have it turned on for this part of the scan, it's gonna make a playlist entry for all of those tapes or discs, as well as the M3U file, and we do not want that. Not yet. And then if you have your game zip, make sure that you have scan inside archives on as well. But once you have these options set, you can go ahead and start the scan. After that first scan's finished, we're going to do a second scan specifically for those M3U files. So for this one, we're going to make sure scan recursively is on, but we're going to set the file extension to M3U. So press A on this, type in M3U, and press start. And everything else is still the same. But now I'm going to go ahead and start the scan again, and it's going to find my three M3U files. And after that scan's finished, if I back out and go over to the bottom left here, there is a new Commodore 64 playlist entry. And there it is. And it should have found all of my games, so there we go. And there is one of my multi-track games right here. And here, and there. There we go. But now that the playlist is made, we can begin running games. So just select a game, press A on it, press A again to run. And there we go, Commodore 64 up and running on the Wii U through RetroArch, and this is so much fun. Now before we can begin playing Commodore 64 games, there is some control setup we need to cover. So if you press the home button on your Wii U gamepad, it will bring up your RetroArch quick menu. And from here we're going to scroll down to controls, because there are some things we need to change if we want to play the games, like I just said. So here we go. Anyway, go down to port 1 controls, and by default this is set to joystick. We need to change this over to RetroPad. So just press left on your D-pad, it should change it right over to RetroPad. And then um, port 3 is also set to keyboard, but for whatever reason, my keyboard doesn't work in the Commodore 64 emulator, even though it worked on the ZX Spectrum emulator, so I'm not sure what that's about, but I don't have physical keyboard support at this time. Not sure why. Just a thing. Thought I'd mention it. But anyway... Now that we have our controls set to RetroPad, we can actually bring up a virtual keyboard using the select button on our Wii U gamepad. When it was set to joystick, we couldn't do this. But as you can see for Pac-Man here, there are a number of options we can change using the keyboard. So we can press F5 to change difficulty. And this is a little counterintuitive. You need to press B on these options to select them. If you press A, it just changes the keyboard transparency. But we could change the difficulty on the games and then to start playing a game, we just press F1. And there we go. Now I'm up and running playing Pac-Man on Commodore 64 emulation on a Wii U. Like, this is awesome. And then the games play exactly as you'd expect. And I killed myself. Love it. Now, just another quick note on controls. The Commodore 64 had two joystick ports. Most games used port 2. But there are also games that use port 1, and to change between the two on the fly, you can bring up the virtual keyboard using the select button. And there is a nice little joy button down here in the bottom right, and you can press B on this. 
and it will swap the joysticks, but Pac-Man can't run if the controller is in the wrong port, so it just brings you back to the main menu. So we could just go back and change it back over. It's pretty ingenious, actually. Just have the whole game reset if your controller's in the wrong port. Like, good job to them. But that's pretty much going to cover it as far as basic setup and getting your games running is concerned. Get the games, put them on your Wii U SD card, get the control set up, and you are ready to begin playing games. But now let's go ahead and talk about multi-sided games here. So I loaded up California Games. This game has four different sides. And the main menu takes up one entire side. And leaving the main menu asks you to insert disc 2. So to do this, you need to press the home button on your Wii U gamepad. And we're going to scroll down to the disc control option. So right here, disc control, press A. We're going to tell it to eject the disc. And we're going to change the current disc index. You can press A to see your discs. And we're going to change it to side 2. And then we're going to tell it to insert the disc. And then you just need to give it a minute and it should boot up. And there we go. You might also need to press your B button to get the load to initiate. Just uh, experiment with it. Sometimes it's automatic, sometimes you need to press B. But now I can play California games on Commodore 64. And th again, that was dynamic disc swapping in action. So again, eject disc, change the disc you need. Insert disk. But I think that covers all of the basics of Commodore 64 emulation on the Wii U, so let's dive into some of the more advanced core settings. So once again, going into our RetroArch Quick Menu, we are going to find the Options tab here. So press A to go in here. And our first option is to change what model of Commodore 64 we are using. So by default, it is set to PAL. The Commodore 64 was really a lot bigger over in European territories than it was in the US, so a lot of the games you're going to play are actually for PAL regions, but if you want to, you can change this between NTSC and PAL regions as you see fit. You can also change between a number of other varieties of Commodore 64 systems like the SX, Educator, and even Japanese systems. For Commodore 64, I honestly just leave it on PAL because that's what the vast majority of these games are expecting to run in. A lot of them will run under NTSC, but I don't know. I just leave it on PAL myself. Next, we have System RAM Expansion Units. So if you know you're going to need some of the expansion units for the RAM, you can set that here. Next is an option for Jiffy DOS. I'm not going to cover that. It requires Jiffy DOS ROMs, and I don't have those, so... If you have them, you put them in a folder named Vice, put them in your RetroArch system folder, and you can enable Jiffy DOS. We're going to skip the read Vice Rec and system reset types. We're also going to skip media cartridge, media auto start, and, and skip down to media automatic load warp. I recommend turning this on, otherwise you're going to be stuck waiting for games to load for a while. Definitely turn this one on. If you're going to be using Jiffy DOS though, make sure it's turned off. Leave True Drive Emulation on. And we're going to skip virtual device traps, floppy write protection, easy flash write protection, global work disk, and we're going to skip down to show video options. So you can enable this back out of your options menu, come back in, and now when we scroll back down, there will be a ton more video options available. So you can choose between aspect ratios, zoom modes, zoom mode crops, or you can even do manual crops if you want to. This also lets you change up the way the virtual keyboard will look, and then you could also change up the color palette. Colador is supposed to be the most accurate, so I just leave it on that. But then you could also adjust things like gamma, brightness, contrast, saturation, and tint, as well as color depth. So you can change this between 16 or 24 bit as you see fit. But I'm going to go ahead and close out of this one. Just so it's not taking up as much room. And now we could do the same for audio options. We could press A to go into it. Back out, come back in. And now we have different audio options. So there's audio drive tape sound emulation that you can have enabled and you can set the volume for that here. This does require fast load to be off though. So I don't know, it's kind of a trade off. Then there's audio leak emulation. You could turn this on if you want to have a more authentic experience. Then you could choose the audio engine. I think Reset is good for the Wii U. Then you could choose your audio chip here. So the 6581 is the original and then the C64C use the 8580. So you want the original you can set that here 
Then you can set an extra address. I don't really understand Commodore 64 architecture enough to know what purpose that served. But if you're a Commodore fan, you probably know what that means. Then we got audio resampling. I will leave this on fast for the Wii U. Commodore 64 emulation seems to take a toll on Wii U, so I don't want to try to get it too, too accurate, sadly. But then you also have different filters and bias gains that you can adjust here if you're an audiophile, as well as adjusting the sample rate. But I'm going to go ahead and turn off the audio options now as well. Anyway. Our next set of options all have to do with input. So you can change dead zones for analog sticks and mouse speeds and different things like that. The next option is to get a multi-tap of sorts emulated. Unfortunately, I still can't get more than the gamepad to work under Wii U emulation, so this is kind of useless at the moment. Next, we have key raw keypad mappings. I haven't needed to turn these on. I don't have games that need this, so I'm just going to ignore it. Going to ignore the keyboard key map. I've tried enabling keyboard pass-through to get my physical keyboard to work on the Wii U for Commodore 64, but it hasn't seemed to do anything. It might just be my keyboard, to be honest, but I turn this one on. I'm going to skip the data set hotkeys, and let's talk about mapping options because this actually lets you set a number of different, a number of different uh, hotkeys that you can put on your gamepad to control the system. So go through here and you can go ahead and choose any of these that you might need. Honestly, it doesn't really get too user friendly until you get down to the retro pad section. So like you could set buttons for your Wii U gamepad to do different things. For example, select being toggle the keyboard and then your other control keys will be listed here and you can set them as you need them. Then you can also turn on or disable turbo fire if you want. And then you could also manually change the port here. But again, you could just do this through the on-screen keyboard, which I would recommend. But then you could also change what is connected to your ports. And then you could change which button is the fire button. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Default options have worked fine for me. But that's pretty much going to cover it as far as core options are concerned. There's a lot in here to mess with. A lot of it will be very game specific. So if you need certain settings on certain games, make sure that you save them as a create game options file here at the top of the options menu. So that way all of your individual games will have the settings they need as you play them. Now, normally in this part of the video, I would cover shaders, but unfortunately, Wii U shaders are a bit odd, so I'm going to be making a dedicated Wii U shader video once we finish off the core video, so stay tuned for that. But I think that's going to do it for this Commodore 64 emulation tutorial. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll do my best to try to help you out. Commodore 64 emulation isn't exactly one of my stronger systems, but I will still do my best. But now if you could all do me a huge favor and be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. Really goes a long way to helping out the channel and I can't thank you all enough for that. And if you haven't done so already, also hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live. Both of these things really help out the channel and I can't thank you all enough for that. If you are feeling particularly generous and want to help support the channel further, you can always check out that join button here on YouTube, the merch shelf, or that Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Little really goes a long way to keeping this place running, and I'm so grateful to all of you for that. To all my current champions, thank you so much for being amazing. Y'all rock. Friggin' rock stars, you. But that's gonna do it for this one, so until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome, and we will see you all back next video.